Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today we're going to begin our series on the Stations of the Cross with the first station. Jesus is condemned to death. Imagine Jesus having to stand before Pontius Pilate in front of everyone, a man who did nothing wrong, who never lied, who did things for everyone, placing his own needs always second to that of others. And what does the thanks he get? Being placed, arrested, made fun of, verbally abused, and lies brought forward about him. He's a blasphemer. Crucify him. Imagine Jesus' shame standing in front of these people. And yet Jesus does that for love of you and of me. He could have had the angels come to rescue him. But let's face it, Jesus doesn't even need, need any help. He's God. He doesn't need anyone to rescue him. And what does he do? He stands in silence. What can we learn from this station? We see in Pilate that he thinks that he has the power over Jesus. And Jesus is very clear in saying, you would have no power over me unless given to you from above. Friends, we have to learn from Pilate of our dependency on God. We can do nothing without him. Jesus also teaches us true humility. How many of us, when people make comments about us, feel the need to defend ourselves? I know that's my first reaction, especially when somebody says something that's untrue about ourselves. Does it not hurt us as it damages our reputation, our moral character, our mental health, etc.? Yet Jesus teaches us true humility that sometimes it's not worth it. It's not fighting over. And when we swallow our pride and sometimes take it, it doesn't mean that the statements are now true. But this idea of turning the other cheek is not just a teaching of Jesus Christ, but something he modeled for us. How many times have we connected with the sufferings of Jesus? People have said things about us that were hurtful. They may date back to our time in elementary or high school. Perhaps a bully who said something about you that still haunts you years afterwards. Perhaps it's a comment by a family member or friend that continues to eat at your ego or sense of self. A self-esteem issue that we might have or this idea of just feeling loved that each of us deserve. There are so many ways to connect with the sufferings of Jesus as he stands before Pilate, the Sanhedrin, the crowd, and all who gather in front of him. Amidst the cries of Hosanna are shouts of crucify him. And yet Jesus stands there like a lamb being led to the slaughter or a sheep before its shearers. And as the scriptures tell us, he is silent. As we pray this station, my brothers and sisters, may it be an inspiration to us at times to also have the strength to stand there, to be ridiculed, to be made fun of, and yet not to change who we are, whether or not the statements about us are true or false. Maybe we can also spend some time today, friends, praying for those who continue to be persecuted in many ways, in their marriages or their family units, at work or at school. Perhaps because of their race, they are ridiculed or discriminated against. Perhaps it's their sexual orientation or the way they look. Sometimes we are judged, ridiculed, attacked, abused for many and a variety of reasons. And yet what is consistent in them 
is that God stands beside us amongst the ridicule, amongst the statements, whether they be false or true statements. How many times have we been accused of something that we have done and the feelings of guilt and remorse may be overcoming for us? We know that Jesus did not do the things he was accused of, and yet God absolutely stands beside us even when we are in the wrong. He is a God who is merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The devil, however, wishes to continue to throw daggers at us just as he tried to throw daggers at Jesus by words, words that can damage and haunt us for a long period of time. And so this first station where Jesus is condemned, I think is a station we can all relate to in a variety of manners. But how often do we think of ourselves as the crowd? How many times have we said things about others that are not true? How often have I damaged the character or the well-being of another person? because of my own issues, because of my own insecurities, or out of vengeance because that person or group of people has hurt me. Is this what a follower of Jesus should be doing? Friends, may we also be aware as we reflect upon the station for the many times, even when we have made true statements, to ask ourselves the question, am I to judge? By bringing up this person's weaknesses, mistakes, etc., does it change the situation? Can it make things better? Or am I doing it to embarrass them, ridicule them, or to hurt them further? You see, as we pray the way of the cross, my brothers and sisters, these are powerful expressions of the sufferings of Jesus that are intimately connected with our sufferings too. They represent real day experiences in which you and I are called to face ourselves and those around us and to see things as God does. Perhaps we can recall the words of Jesus in the scriptures in which the woman who is about to be stoned is brought before him. And Jesus says, Let the one without sin cast the first stone. Before we use words to ridicule others, before we remind others of their shortcomings and failures, perhaps we can connect ourselves to this first station of the cross and realize that just as you and I are in need of people's compassion, forgiveness, and mercy— What are some ways in which we can be more compassionate, merciful, and forgiving to others as well? Regardless of whether they deserve our mercy or not. Am I not following in the footsteps of Jesus, who from the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do? As we continue Lent 2023, I encourage each of us to identify with Pilate, with Jesus, and with the crowd, and to think of ways in our own lives in which I may be called in my position of life to protect rather than to attack, the times in which I need to be called upon to be silent and to sometimes take it. I'm reminded of the statement of just because somebody says something doesn't mean it's true. And to also ask God for the power to let go and let God. And then finally, to use my words and actions to build others up rather than to tear them down. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, 
please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.